man, that is the most unattractive thing in a woman. It's a broken Pretty foot. Much. Yeah, it's a turn off. <laughs> Start to finish. Exactly. Yes. Why not? Mm -hmm. Don't fight it. I won't. Okay. Okay, then. Rock on. Sure. Here you go. Rock and movie. Thank you. What a delight. Thank you. And a fun caper, and he goes, it felt more, it felt more substantive. Well, that's, uh, the whole genesis of this whole series, I guess we can call it now, because there's three, uh, was, uh, it was a tribute to my father. So the third one, we had the great fortune of introducing Michael Caine as my father. Um, you know, I was heartbroken after my dad died. I wrote the first one. Michael DeLuca at New Line said, what are you working on? I said, about a, a, about a spy from the 60s, a swinger, who comes back to present day. I, and I said, but you're not going to, I don't think you're going to dig it. And he said, no, I think it's a cool idea. Send it to me. He gave it a green light the next day. Uh, you know, I didn't know necessarily that it would be anybody's cup of tea. So when we did the third one, we, we wanted it to be the best one yet. And we wanted it to be about fathers and sons, which is the whole reason why we made the movie in the first place. Well, I'm glad you did. Thank you. Now, it has a delightful dance mix of cunning wordsmithery and poo-poo jokes. It's, I like that because it just spreads out the appeal of it to everyone. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I think uh, I enjoy silly things, and uh, we tried our hardest to make it, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like Flintstone vitamins, you know. You know, you're eating Barney and Dino. You don't need to know it's it's got vitamins, you know. And that's, you know, that's what we were trying to do. Exactly. And is it weird that, we, I mean, movies that basically take the piss out of pop culture, you're now part of pop, pop culture because of them? We were to become the ones we were to mock, yes. I think. We became the ones we were to mock. Absolutely. And I like how Goldmember kind of has, he has, I have like singing Tourette syndrome, and I'm pretty sure that's what he has. You have singing Tourette syndrome? Yeah, I'm confident that's what it is. Yes. I've diagnosed myself. Yes. Of course. I didn't know there was such a, a branch of that. There is now. That plaguing disease. I've but, just made uh, it. But don't you think that's kind of what he has? Uh, you, with the whole uh, Casey, uh, and that's the way, uh huh, uh huh, I like it, Casey, and the sunshine band. Yes. I, 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 I think it is, um, it's probably medical. Maybe in a little therapy, mm -hmm. he could come to understand it, appreciate mm. it a bit more. Probably. Yeah. Aversion therapy, probably. Mm -hmm. Electric shock. Indeed. Very B.F. Skinner. Yeah. The box. Sadly. <sighs> what about, I mean, doing these films must be a bit cathartic in a way. Uh. <laughs> Just because you get to say what comes to your mind when you think of things sometimes. Well, it's all cathartic. Um, it's, you know, the process is very fun. It's a very, I mean, it's hard work, but it's, and there's long hours, but it's at least very fun, you know. And uh, you get to, you know, do jokes that, uh, you know, you want to see. And that's, that's been our, our kind of our guiding principle. Right. To try and make a silly movie, a fun movie that uh, we would want to go see. Awesome. I'm glad you did. Thank you. It's a true delight. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. My pleasure. But what a delightful film. This was just magic. It was so fun to watch. Well, I'm glad. I'm, I had a good time. I saw it just last night for the first time, and I must say I howled. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> That's rape. <laughs> Is it kind of nerve-wracking when you've taken part in bits and bobs of the film, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I really hope that it works as easy. Well, it's very curious to see a, you know, a movie for the first time, because you, you're aware of what scenes were, you know, what bits were cut, um, what bits, you know, sort of work. It's, 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 it's hard to be objective, but uh, who needed to be objective with this? I just enjoyed myself so much, and I can't wait to go back because there's so much in it. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a like multi layer. Yes. It is. And one thing that I really love about this film is the dance mix of potty humor and clever the word smithery and all that kind of stuff. It's just nice how it because it appeals to a gazillion people. Well, it, it, it appeals to me, I must say, because he, Mike, in all his manifestations, all the characters he plays, he's, he can say the unthinkable or the unsayable, the thing that's on the tip of our tongue, but we good manners prevent us from saying it. But he says it on our behalf, and it's, of course, hysterical. Bless him for saying it. I agree. Must be a little bit of cathartic therapy, just being on the set. You're like, he, he said it out loud. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, and normally, you know, the, the old adage is if you're doing a comedy, it's usually really tough sledding. Whereas if you're doing a kind of high tragedy, it's, you know, it's this 
<laughs> laugh a minute. But yeah, Jack and Avery go go. <laughs> exactly, but these are these are fun to do. You know, there's a nice family feeling. Um, I think people are, have reasonably certain that you know the, what they're doing is now appreciated. So um, I hope this one works as as well as the other one has. I dare say it shall. Is it kind of is it crazy to be in part of a trilogy that when the beginning when it first came out the whole world was kind of like hmm, Austin Powers what's this? Uh, well, it's very nice. Uh, and now we're a sort of brand item rather than this unknown quantity. And uh, but of course, equally, expectations are even higher uh, the third time around. So. Uh, We'll see. Absolutely. And it's also been interesting to watch how something that pokes fun at popular culture is now part of popular culture. Is that <laughs> weird? You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, although it, what I love is, is that, that it revisits in a kind of humorous way, you know, the, the, the times past, like the swinging 60s and now the kind of hideous 70s. And you cannot believe you have to pinch yourself that people actually dress like that. <laughs> I'm just writing for the 80s part. <laughs> like, <Right>. no! <laughs> the true horrors. Is there, do you think there will be future, or is this, is this our last? Industry? Everyone asks this. Of course, that's yeah. the one thing you've got to ask Mike. And, um, uh, and when you get an answer, come and tell me. I will. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll call your agent. Right, yep. Gonna happen. So what about, I mean, as an actor doing these things, is it, what, how different is of an experience is it? Obviously, from tragedy, it's going to be totally different. But what's the mood well, like being in a Mike Myers film? Well, great. I mean, it's obviously all a little exaggerated. Even the, the, the clothes are a little over the top and exaggerated, and, and plus the acting. Uh, I keep expecting the, you know, the acting police to be at the door <laughs> to come in and arrest one. But uh, it's fun to do. It's fun to kind of let go. And, um, and uh, you know, it, it, it's, it is what it is. And uh, I, I've become very fond of Basil. And... Uh, um, and it would be lovely to kind of um, put on those exaggerated clothes again. Absolutely. He's a lovely guy. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. pleasure thank you. Here. Absolutely. And uh, the whole footsie NASDAQ thing? Mm, we'll see. I got to be Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, Caper's a go-go in this one. Caper's a go-go. Absolutely. You had quite a character arc oh. in this film. Yeah. Was it more fun? Getting to explore the other side? I haven't seen the whole film, but explore the other side. <laughs> Um, we don't want to give it away for the audience, but no, it was fun. Um, the whole, you know, experience was, you know, more involved, I guess. Let's just say you got a little closer to Velvet, as it were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what do you think about the fashions, fashions on uh, both sides of the coin? I'd rather be, you know, the evil character rather than a different character. <laughs> Is it closer to your heart? Yeah, I mean, I'm such a nice person all the time in real life, so being able to play that evil character and get all your frustrations out, it's fun. <laughs> so it's like counseling for you. Yeah, exactly. Beating up a pillow or something like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Beating up a pillow, being in a big famous movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one or the other. Either way, I'll do. So it's been kind of fun watching, I mean, how these films that make fun of pop culture are actually now part of pop culture. Is it kind of weird to find yourself in... You, people can now, like, I don't know, you, you're part of the whole way people talk now. Um, well, that's partly because of Mike, but I enjoy the, um, these movies because uh, the first film, I was such a big fan, so, you know, just having the opportunity to be a part of the second and now the third is, you know, a dream come true. Absolutely. And what do you think about the um, like the dance mix? I love how it's just a it's heavy, heavy mix of potty humor and then very clever word smithery. I mean, it must be nice to. Well, Mike, it. Mike comes up with um, these songs and things like that, and you know, the dance routine, and you know, it's it's like a big party on the set all the time. You'd never guess it. No, not at all. I thought you were out there like cracking whips, and it was all very serious and uh, no. not remotely. No. No. What about it for you as an actor? I mean, does it actually take you places that you haven't been before, or what's the experience like? Well, I actually got started doing stunt work, so it just slowly grew into where it's at now, and, you know, I'm still trying to get used to it. What, what do you learn about yourself when you do these kind of things? Um, <laughs> you learn, you know, well, a little bit more about, you know, acting as far as, like, 
you know, you know, for me, I guess I got started doing stunt work, and having to be a character like Mini Me, you don't really get to talk or anything like that, so you have to express your feelings, you know, through facial expressions. So, you know, it's a challenge, but you know, I was, I enjoy it definitely. You and Marcel Marceau. <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Yeah, don't fight it. <laughs> What would you say, like, I don't know, say you're hanging out on your porch once you've retired and you're looking back on your film career, why are you glad that these films play a part in your life? Um, it's, it's a great experience. Um, I'm just enjoying it while I can. You never know when it's going to end, you know, as an actor. So we just take one day at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And why, how do you explain the phenomenon? I mean, I don't think when Austin Powers first came out that anybody expected it to become this cultural phenomenon. Um... I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed the first one. I watched it all the time. So, you know, me having the opportunity to be part of the second and now the third, you know, I, I it's like it, a big cult following, you know, from the first one. And I'm one of those people. Woohoo! This is how convenient. Exactly. Pretty handy. I like it. <laughs> and what about, I mean, just you as an actor, what, what kind of things do you do you get from being in this? Does it Does it change how, you know, you approach your craft or... How do you work it? What do I get from being in these films? Yeah, I mean, like, do, have you reached a new sort of pinnacle or? Yeah, cash-wise. <laughs> Don't fight it. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Give me everything you got. Well, sadly, don't take my pockets. <laughs> they're, they're very, very sad. Sad little pockets. But Sorry. Anyhow, enough about me. It's cool. Don't worry mm, okay. about it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little, like, a non sequitur. Let's go this way. Yes. We'll just put it over here, right? Off to the side. Yes. All right. And finally, uh, if you had to convince someone who knew nothing about these movies to go, how would you do it? It's funny. Go watch it. Rock on. <laughs> there we go. Thank you kindly, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you kindly. Fixed it for you. <clears throat> Dr. Barak Barabarian at UCLA Medical Center. Did he do a good job? He did indeed. While, while we're doing this, I can kick it and you can be, you Say, know. Say, that'd be get, fun. Get a few little, <laughs> get, a, get a little reaction out of her, huh? Hee-haw, let's do it. <laughs> now, what do I call you? Sheila, but I'm not on TV, so you don't have to call me anything. You, they take you out? They take me out. I cried a tear. Are you all right? <laughs> What's fascinating? <laughs> so they take you out. Yeah, go figure, right? Yeah. So, uh, where did this happen? Downtown Los Angeles. Brutal place. Were you, um... Walking. Oh, well, I thought maybe you might have been a little bit bent out of shape or something. Sadly, no. It was just, uh, <coughs> putting the one foot in front of the other thing kind of got the best of me. That can do it. Yeah. <coughs> Who knew? Who knew? But what a smashing delight this film is. Did you see it last night? I did indeed. That's the first time, right? Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I, I've, I have saw a lot of it in the post-production, but I've, uh, we were in England and uh, a lot of the press saw it there and they, they loved it. And everybody I've talked to just says it's uh, terrific, a lot of fun. It's hilarious. I didn't watch any of the parts that you were in, but other than that, Oh, it was I great. see. Yeah. You close your eyes then? <laughs> it happened. It's weird. I don't know. That was delightful. I mean, it's just being, taking part in these films, what is it like being part of something that takes the fun out of pop culture, but also is now part of pop culture? It's the best time I've had since I've been in the motion picture business. I couldn't wait to get to work. I love doing this, going into this world and playing this kind of comedy, which uh, came to me uh, kind of from a, out of nowhere, sort of an actor's dream in a way. I was um, asked to be on Saturday Night Live, and that's when I met Mike. And Mike and I did a couple of skits together. And he saw this kind of comedic quality that he felt would be right for uh, Austin Powers. And he created and wrote the part of number two for me. So when I got the script, I read it and I said, oh my God, this is great. What an opportunity. What a world to be in. And it's opened up so much for me, you know, because people have seen me in a different light. And to be in something like this, which sends this whole era up, you know, and uh, have a whole new fan base and kids coming up to me and saying, oh, you're number two and all that. It's been a joy, I can't tell you. It's been the best. What about the experience as an actor? I mean, does it, is it stretch new acting bones oh, for you? Oh, believe or? me, believe me. Tell me about it. Well, 
You know, for, fortunately, you know, uh, Jay Roach directed all three of these, and he's a marvelous actor's director. And uh, I have a great deal of trust in him, so I would do anything that he would suggest to me, and he made a lot of suggestions to me, and, uh, and made it so it would be fresh, and uh, gave other dimensions to perhaps, uh, you know, a performance that could have gone kind of flat. And um, it's, um, you know, to be, to be able to do something like this in this day and age uh, is, is pretty good because there's only one world of Austin Powers. There's no other movies like this around. I mean, this is it. So when you get involved in that arena and uh, in that framework, you're kind of free to do and create what you want to create because there's nothing to relate it to. I mean, it's a whole... Mm -hmm. you know, a, a fresh world. So it's been, it's been a real joy for me, a real privilege to be involved in this picture and to be involved with these wonderful people. We've had a great time together. Sounds like it. Oh, yeah. So you've got Jack and Apery and hijinks are now part of your sort of your acting curriculum now? My what? Your acting, how you like to approach your craft now when you're in these movies? No, what did you ask me before that? Hijinks. Is it, Hi I mean, because you get to go, it's obviously like hyper-extenuated reality. Uh, yeah, but... It's a world, it is, it is that. But it, you, it, it, when you're in that, you've got to be careful that you don't extend too far, because if you extend too far, then you do lose the reality of it. And so that's why these pictures are put together with such a professional uh, group of people with creating these sets and the costumes and all of this life and behavior so that we're free to do all of that hyperextension. But it has to be have some base of reality. Mm. I lost it a little bit, too, and uh, I must say that Mike said, you know, maybe you better think about coming down a little bit, because you can go too much. You can get too big, and, you know, you got the frame, and you've got all of this behavior going on, and it all has to be coordinated to make it work, and if one person gets up too high and is not believable, it can throw the whole thing, you know, off balance. and. Uh, that's where Mike and uh, Jay have a tremendous eye in that, in that regard. Well, you did a marvelous job. Oh, thanks so much. Now. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I That's the main it. thing. Absolutely. I am indeed. Let's go. What a fun caper. Thank you. A delightful caper. It's nice It's because it does, it does have an arc. Yeah. It moves on. Yeah, it does. Does it feel good? It feels great. I had a great time. I suppose it's difficult not to. Um, I, it was. It was difficult not to have a good time because everybody's having such a good time and I'd be a big party pooper to sit back and say, I don't like any of this, you know? I don't want to be a funster. No, I enjoy all these people and it's such a gift to get to be a part of something like this. Pretty much. And I think it also is, I mean, just for comedy's sake, to be with these amazing wordsmithery kings. Yeah, we, uh, we just had a lot of no real limits to it. We just got to play around and have fun. Indeed. Now, how do you think when you got, I mean, you have pressure on the third one where people are going to be like, hmm, you know, is it really going to be hilarious? Because mm. what, was it hard on the set where you're like, we have to just not on the set? No, I mean, I didn't think about it at all because it kind of doesn't uh, behoove you at all to consider the pressure when you're trying to make something uh, real or work or, or if, you're, if you're really thinking about how people are going to receive it, you'll second guess yourself. And that's the best part about this is everybody just kind of went with their instincts and hope for the best. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. And it's fine. I mean, would you got your finger on the pulse as far as like taking the Mickey out of culture and all that kind of stuff? Is I it like fun that. to just to get to play with what's what's popular? Um, it is. Uh, it is. I, I think it's important for for people to kind of look around at what is popular and why it is and the choices that we've made as a as a world <laughs> as a group and you know point out things that have become really important and question that and have a good time. Absolutely. And there's obviously a lot of like Jack Napery with potty humor and things like that, but it does seem <laughs> to go, you know, beyond that. Like there are some thoughtful moments oh, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, there's some James Lipton moments. Absolutely. In the movie. Why is it important to have that? I mean not and have it just be potty land. Um I think that's just a different type of film. Uh there are films that are completely effective as a raucous, uh gross out romp and this just isn't one of them. It's not to say that there's anything wrong with it, it's just a different path. Absolutely. And what about you as an actor? I mean, is, is it, because there's a lot of improv that you do yeah. in this, is it, is it more freeing to be in this kind of film, or what uh, kind of experience the, is it? I hope it doesn't sound obnoxious to say, but, but films like this are, really are a challenge, because um, especially my character is always coming from a 
genuinely truthful plays of hurt and betrayal and and whatnot. Um, so I have to really be in that, be authentic in that for it to for it to be funny. Um, and the improv stuff is just a blessing. I love getting to play around on a movie like this, especially with people like that. I mean, I got the best of the best, and I get to be a part of it. I love it. Pretty much. And yeah. what about working on the laugh? Did you sit at home and just on the laugh? No, I kind of came up with that in the moment. Uh, it's not something you can really practice too much. I talked with, with Jay Roach about it for a second before we did it and did something in rehearsal, and he was like, a little bit this way, and the pitch in here, and Quincy Jones came in at one point and was like, eh, i got to bounce up the level. So we had all this weird reverberation. One of the guys that worked with Britney Spears was coaching me for half a second, so and we got a lot into it, but I think ultimately it's going to be a soundtrack item. Absolutely, why not? Yeah. You going to be a backup singer for Britney now? Mm, I can't really dance, so... So? I don't know, maybe I can... Sing to a pre-recorded track. They can move you around on a rotating stage. If they could, I'd be into it. It'd be fun. Yeah, just anything to be close to her, honestly. Why not? Yeah. Don't fight it. <laughs> <laughs> and say it's, uh, I don't know, 42 years down the road, you're sitting on your porch looking back on your career. Why are you glad that these play part of your filmography? Because I'm 70 and I'm still alive. I mean, <laughs> at that point, I'd really <laughs> just be happy to be breathing. Um, why am I happy to be a part of this film? Yeah. Because it's a hugely satisfying experience. Um, I'm very grateful to be a part of something that is commercially successful and unbelievably fun. I think that's a rare thing. Very much. That was yeah. mighty fun. Yeah. Yay. Well, thank you kindly, sir. Thank I you very much. Up. Nice to have met you. Pleasure to meet you. So we'd like to discuss the economic impact on the FTSE, <laughs> uh, given the current economic crisis. Um, I have a lot to say about that. I have an economics degree, so Do you? you could actually get a lot out of me on that. Okay. I'm just kidding. Go! Well, it's too bad all the movies you direct just suck and no one comes <laughs> to see them. You know, I, I'm trying to get real work someday. It's uh, it's kind of embarrassing to have, you know. But no, I, we've, I've been lucky. Uh, and mostly, you know, I, I'm lucky to get to work with, like, Mike Myers. And what can I say? He found me. He He's collaborated with me on these. And um, most of what I know about comedy, I, I honestly learned from Mike. So I have no, no BS. Well, on. Is it daunting at all to, to, you know, helm something that the world's kind of like, okay, this one better live up to everything? It's terrifying because, you know, the first one was kind of made for people who like weird comedy. And the second one was, wow, they really like it. That's cool. Um, and the third one was like, oh, no, what do we do now? So we, we just had to convince ourselves that we had enough new stuff to, to make it worth it. And... With um, with Goldmember, when I would hear Mike do this accent and and uh, imagine him wearing these clogs and roller skating and dancing, I thought, okay, I'm in. You know, that's weird enough for me. Um, so it's actually the the surprising fresh stuff that always gets me sure that we can we can do better. And I actually like this one better because there's also all these layers of character stuff. The the Michael Caine character thing, the whole father son thing. The father-son step between Dr. Evil, Mini-Me, and Scott is my, like my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, it did feel more substantive and sort of like, I got misty. Yeah. Which is stupid. I'm like, when they, yeah, well, that's great. Well, I, there's some really <laughs> emotional stuff and it is funny emotional and that's my favorite thing is to always like keep you a little bit like loving this part. We don't do parodies. We really don't. We really do something where we love these characters. We love these films we're referring to. We love these, the 60s or the 70s and we present them with you know, all of that kind of affection for what they are, and we invite people to kind of come in, and then we totally pull the rug out from under you and, and make fun of it, too. So to be able to do both is is really cool. That's what that's what we try to do. Absolutely. And it's sort of, I love how it's a, a delightful piss take of pop culture <laughs> and everything, and now is part of pop culture, because you always wander around seeing people being like, yeah, by being blah, blah, blah. Well, is that weird? Isn't that, isn't that amazing that he can... I don't know how Mike does it. I honestly... I think he has uh, a super brain that was by a genetically engineered or something. It's really an unusual mind that can absorb pop culture. And some of its weirdest, most, that's not funny, what, you know, like he finds stuff and then puts it through his own recombinant image combiner thing, his pop culture reinvention machine, and spits it out. And it's so funny. And you just go, how come nobody else is thinking of that? So yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I, I feel pretty fortunate to watch it happen. The micrometer. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what about? I mean, do you do you feel that you have to rein it in at all, or is it just the day it's just kick off by being like, okay, go play? I don't. Yeah, I try to be the guy who enables people to do their 
most dysfunctional <laughs> stuff on camera and um, and allow them to sort of but I, I mostly take care of them you know in a weird way I try to like make sure their performance is not only going to be hilarious but that will survive in the movie because it actually moved the story a little bit or supported the tone or helped another character and how do you truly find the balance between poo-poo jokes and <laughs> clever word smithery well it is a balance I, I, you, there's a good way of putting it um, I think that comedy has to be impolite sometimes. I don't want to be impolite all the time. If I'm having dinner with you and I'm telling you stories and we're having a bottle of wine or something, I'll start telling you some jokes and I might say something off color just to shake you up a little bit, but then I'll go back and try to win your heart or make you see the world a different way. Or You know what I mean? Like you, that's how I, <laughs> but that's how I try to do it with the audience too, is like, okay, look, I'm not gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna be polite about this. I might say some racy stuff, guess what? And then I think they pick up a little bit and, and come at it with um, um, a less inhibited audience participation. And so most of the actors were saying it was almost like going to th therapy, you know, because you <laughs> get to say the things that are like here in your mouth and blah. Well, in some ways that's true. You, you were, you're given permission to be uh, a 13-year-old adolescent who doesn't worry so much about whether it's appropriate or not. Whee! <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely thank to you. chat with you. Rockin'. So this movie was so fun to watch. I just had Thank an absolute you. hoot and a holler. Did you have, like, the hair fun must have just been a delight in itself. Yes, it was. I remember <laughs> the first day I got transformed in the Foxy Cleopatra. They turned me around and I had this big afro. It was, it was, it definitely completed Foxy Cleopatra. Um, I've always loved the 70s and, and to be able to have that hair. It was very hard because I sit in, in a chair or lay back or anything and then my afro will be completely flat. So I have a new respect for women of the 70s. Absolutely. I guess riding in airplanes would be more comfortable though. <laughs> Yay! The cushion. <laughs> what about, I mean, was there a part of you that at the end of the day when you had to take off the like, jumpsuits and things, you're like, I want to stay foxy, clear <laughs> Well, the costumes were beautiful, but I mean, it definitely wasn't comfortable a lot of the time being Foxy, you know, pulled and just, you know, I was double stick taped and everything you could imagine. So I was, it was a relief to get out of the costumes. So the physical logistics of it were much harder than you put off. Yeah, yeah. I know I had um, this gold um, chain mail and um, it was about 40 pounds. It, the skirt came all the way down to my feet and I had to run and shoot the gun and hold up my dress and remember my lines and do all this stuff at the same time. So I'm going crazy, but I got through it. But it was very, very heavy. It seemed like it was glamorous, but it, it was definitely painful. So the people in the CIA are actually pansies in comparison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just get to do it all without the outfits. Yeah. And what about, I mean, this must be so fun. Obviously, you're no stranger to being on film because of your videos and things like that, but to get to jump into movie land must be a nice adventure. Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, it's a whole different world, and I'm happy because it's a new challenge for me. And um, it was, I'm happy I, I've done performing because it wouldn't have been as as easy for me. I know, you know, you get on the stage, you, you're nervous, but you have to still put it on. And I definitely was nervous, so I had to use that same, you know, just put it on and, and suck it up and perform, you know. Absolutely. I mean, there must have been times where you're like, hee hee, I'm in a room with my cars, my skin, what am I doing? <laughs> it was times where I was definitely starstruck, definitely intimidated, especially in the beginning, doing a comedy and I'm not a comedian, you know. It was it was scary and following up the past Austin Powers girls, I knew I had to bring it, you know. But I worked it out and um, it turned out really good. It turned out I, I learned a lot about myself and now I I learned that, you know, I can work with legendary people, you know. I didn't know. I thought I'd freeze up, but I did it. <laughs> well, they also I was wondering if there was any starstruckness on their side because it's not like you're completely enough. No, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> they just, you know, everybody was very supportive, and they all knew I was nervous because I didn't even try to front. I was just like, I'm nervous, everyone. But they, they really supported me and gave me good words. It was like, you know, I was the little sister of the bunch. And you said you learned new things about yourself. Like, what kind of things were you experiencing? Um, Socially, movies are, are deeper than just movies because I, um, I've been traveling so much and I've never been in a really stable situation. And before, I was, like, maybe when I was 14 and younger, but not in a, in a while. So I'm, I'm able to get my own house and go home every day, almost have a normal life, have a sense of normalcy. So I learned about myself, you know, just 
being a regular person and I know what foods I like and things that I normally just kind of just take whatever is given to me. So it's good. Excellent. And what about like, I mean, Mike Myers obviously has his finger on the pulse in terms of pop culture and everything that goes on, but you make pop culture. Was it fun just being able to parody everything that is ripe for delight in the world? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. I learned a lot about a lot <laughs> with Mike. <laughs> he, like I said, he did, he taught me more than he, he will ever know. You know, and it was great being around Michael Caine and Mike Myers and all these legendary people. I just felt really honored to even be around them in their presence, let alone be in the movie with them. And finally, say it's like, I don't know, 52 years down the road and you're sitting on your porch hanging out. Why are you glad you put all the energy you did into making this film? Well, it's hilarious. I've heard. I haven't seen it yet, but I know the previous ones were. And everybody's saying that it's one of the funniest. Well, it is the funniest one. So um, I, I, I'll be very happy to, to show this to my grandkids and um, my my children. That's your grandmama right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should be. You're great in it. Thank it's you really very fun. much. Thank, Thank you, you, madam. Lovely to chat with you. Nice to talk to you. Hope it wasn't